Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's so great to see so many of you in the room. Um, I had no idea. I thought it would be me and uh, you know a couple of you. So thank you for staying. And uh, with a name like Heidi Marie Bretz, you would think that I would be doing this in German. But unfortunately, my German is very conversational and not good enough to be doing a presentation. So I understand what you're all saying. <laughs> but um, I'm, more, I'm better off doing it in English. So um, I'm here. You may have heard. Um, how many of you in this room, first of all, are users of OpenStack? OK. How many of you have taken the user survey? Oh, great. OK. Awesome. So you may have heard another name, Heidi. We had another Heidi at uh, the foundation who actually was in charge of uh, running the OpenStack user survey, and she was unable to make it. So I am here doing her presentation, but it's important information, and we use this information across all of the foundation and our community, so we're all very familiar with it. So I've been at the foundation for four years. Um, I run what's called business development, so it's I'm in charge of kind of all of our partnerships and alliances and really building up and supporting our ecosystem around the world and um, helping those companies be successful. So prior to this, I was at AWS for a few years and prior to that, Microsoft and then a long other list of proprietary software companies. So uh, this is my first foray into open source and I don't know if I can ever go back. I'm hooked. So happy to be here in a room with my fellow open sourcers. So the user survey, we do this user survey every six months. We send it out to our 70,000 members of the OpenStack Foundation across 160 countries, and we let them uh, respond to the questions that we ask. We're limited to the number of questions we can ask because we want, um, you know, we want to get the maximum number of respondents. And this year we got uh, our largest number to date. So let's go back. So we had uh, 1,400 people respond. Um, we had 700 deployments reported, and we really feel like this sample represents the, kind of the ideas and the uh, attitudes and the technology use and the use cases across our whole community. So we look at this as really informing us, not just of these 400 com 1,400 companies that responded, but across our whole community. So what we saw this year um, at a very high level, and I'll, I'll dig down, is we saw more OpenStack clouds, bigger clouds, um, large, uh, diverse users, um, kind of, uh, uh, we saw deeper adoption, and then we saw kind of a maturity, some signs of maturity in the technology. So I'll dive deeper into that. So I'll go over some of the demographics, um, user perspectives, which are always interesting, deployments, cloud size, some resources for you guys, and at the end I have a little surprise uh, for you users in the room. Yeah, so let's talk about the demographics. Um, so this year, 44 more deployments and 22% more organizations um, were surveyed than last year. And so through the course of this presentation, you'll hear me refer a lot to last year's numbers. So just as a comparison, you'll hear me do that. Um, but we've been growing in size. Uh, the survey's been growing in size every six months that we've done it. So 32% of our users reported they have more than one role. Uh, many of you may have more than one role or see yourselves here on this chart. So cloud architect being the largest, cloud operator, admin. Um, so those, you know, the majority of the folks that uh, have answered the survey. And every once in a while, I'll throw in just a gratuitous quote um, from the survey because we have an open box that lets people respond however they like. Um, so OpenStack has thousands of developers all over the world working in tandem to develop the strongest, most robust, and most secure product they can. Our team, our marketing team, could not have written that better. So <laughs> we're very grateful, Kurt or whoever wrote this, <laughs> for this comment. Um, who are these users? So the largest share, as you probably imagine, are um, in the IT industry, so 56%, followed by telecommunications at 16, academic and research. And then you'll see we have um, retail and e-commerce, finance. You've probably heard us talk about Walmart um, at some of our events. You've heard us talk about BBVA and Centendar Bank and Wells Fargo. Um, we got manufacturing, government, and defense. And in this other bucket, we saw advertising, entertainment, um, healthcare, real estate. So that's kind of how it all, how they all add up. 
Um, 61 percent of our users and 74 percent of deployments are located outside of the United States. So users are located in 78 countries and 476 cities. So you see, you know, the United States being the largest, um, but Europe second to largest, which surprises some people because they assume Asia would be, but you know, Europe's representing strongly here. And in North America, 9%, um, as you'd imagine, are located in Silicon Valley, which is where I'm from. Uh, hold on, next slide. So organizations of every size use OpenStack. About a quarter have uh, one to 100 employees. About a third have 10 to 100,000 employees. And then the, the majority, um, a greater percentage, are kind of those mid-sized companies. Um, and if you want to learn more about who these users are, We've got lots and lots of user um, studies and case studies on openstack.org slash users. So you can find out about all sizes of companies there and what they're doing. Sorry. So let's hear some user perspectives. Um, we're really interested in the business drivers that are driving OpenStack adoption and uh, avoiding vendor lock-in weighted at number one, which is a change. Our first, the first time that we um, did the survey, save money, uh, it was at the top, so people are, uh, there are different business drivers driving choices now. Um, ability to accelerate innovation is uh, number two, and uh, yesterday as I was listening to people's presentations, I had to look up a bunch of words, and beschleunigen was uh, one of the ones I had to look up, <laughs> so beschleunigen, uh, and it also in, um, increasing operational efficiency is, is also important. So another, another quote, OpenStack is a force to be reckoned with, a powerful array of cloud features businesses have come to expect, came straight from the survey. So that was from a happy, a very happy user. Um, and the happiness and satisfaction of our users is really, really important to us. This is something we take seriously. So uh, every six months with the survey, we, um, we, do, we, we ask questions around a net promoter score, an NPS score. And I don't know if you're familiar with what that is. It's, um, we, ask, we ask our users on a scale of one to 10, how likely they would be to recommend our product to a colleague or a friend. And you can see some really nice growth in our NPS score up until this year. And uh, so we had a drop off of three points. So we dug a little deeper and we tried to understand what's going on that people are less likely to um, recommend OpenStack to, to a, a peer or, uh, or a friend. And we looked at, we, so we broke it down into, into various um, categories. And we looked at um, people who are running private clouds and, uh, and also people who are, um, uh, yep, so it's running public clouds or telecommunications companies. Their net score was very high. It was 39%. And then those folks that were running uh, um, public clouds or hosted private clouds had a really high NPS score of 37%. So this bucket of other was where we found, which was, you know, the, the lower NPS scores. So we're going to dig into that and try and figure out what's going on there. But I'll tell you, it, it is very important to us. And every year, personally, um, at the OpenStack Foundation, we, we each um, are required to adopt a user. So we take one, each of us takes one of those unhappy um, or less happy users, and we contact them. We talk about what they're doing. We try and figure out where the problems are, bring in resources to help them, um, and try and make them more satisfied with OpenStack. But you know, we, we use this really to inform uh, and understand where do we put more resources and what do we need to focus on in the coming year. So we take this very, very seriously. OpenStack is an integration platform for all of your infrastructure technologies that come together. This increases efficiency to operate and provide infrastructure services. So this is this kind of integration engine we've been talking about for a long time where um, OpenStack is really um, just a, kind of a way of pulling in a bunch of different technologies and using them together um, using the OpenStack API. So what are the technologies that uh, users are most interested in? So for the fourth cycle, containers are the ones that they are most interested in, followed by software-defined networking and bare metal. Um, and we've had a lot of talk about containers over the last two days. So that's not surprising. So deployments, what, what kind of clouds are in production? 
So the median OpenStack user runs 61 to 80% of their overall cloud infrastructure on OpenStack. And you'll see 44% run 60% to 100% of their infrastructure on OpenStack. So this speaks to really strong adoption throughout the enterprise, not only um, it, with, uh, it doesn't only speak to new um, infrastructure with new applications running in it, but we feel like it suggests that a lot of legacy systems also are being moved over to OpenStack. Am I talking too fast? Okay. So this is a new question on the survey. So we, we had a question specifically addressing our larger clouds. So those with 100,000 or 1,000 cores or more. And um, so among those clouds, the median users run 81 to 100% of their cloud infrastructure on OpenStack. Um, so they're really running it all. And 1,000 cores sounds like a lot, um, and it is. But if you'll see the sticker on the back of my computer, the 100,000 core club. So we actually have a club, um, and we gather together at our conferences for a little reception of all of those companies that are running over 100,000 cores. And the group's growing. Uh, the room's getting full. So there are quite a few, more and more every six months. And we have two users that we're aware of that, are, uh, that over, have over a million cores running on OpenStack. So that's great, because we get to see OpenStack at scale, which is what it was really built for. So deployments in production, two thirds of OpenStack deployments are in production. Um, you can see it's 2x what, what uh, we had in 2013 with uh, 32%. And then this, where's my pointer? This part right here, this under development and testing, you know, you got a lot of you got a lot of, lot of clouds here that are under development. So that shows strong future growth for OpenStack. So this is interesting. The average age of the OpenStack cloud is 1.68 years. So most these are production clouds. So most production clouds were uh, deployed in 2016 and 2017. And if you look actually at our NPS score, which I was talking to about before, um, those that were the happiest, you know, if you dig, because we have a lot more information that you can find on the website in the report, um, those that were the happiest were those that had launched clouds more recently than those who had older clouds from like 2010 to 2012. So this shows um, which uh, versions of OpenStack people are adopting over the nine cycles that we've done this um, survey. So you can see up here, the majority of people uh, in the survey are on the top three releases, or the, the, pre, the past three releases. This is interesting too. The, um, the average cloud uses nine projects. Uh, clouds in production use eight projects, but it's not insignificant. This is 16% of those reported are using 12 or more OpenStack projects, or using 12, I mean, OpenStack projects. So that's, uh, that's not insignificant. So our core services, you know, Keystone, Nova, Glance, Neutron, Horizon, um, are used uh, almost fully by the clouds that are um, that are in production. So 99, 98 percent, whatever um, you can see. So that's almost uh, total deployment there. And then here we got some nice growth in Heat, in Solometer, Swift, Rally, our bare metal, Ironic. So that's where we're seeing some good growth. And these projects are gaining in popularity as well. Um, you can see you know, our container-related projects here, Cola and Magnum, um, growing nicely. So in the previous slide, we asked, which technologies are you using? This one asks, which of the projects, or which of you know, the OpenStack projects are you using? These is, this asks, which are you interested in adopting? So this is where some of the future development and, and usage may be in some of these services. So cloud size. 37% of clouds have 100,000 cores versus 29% last year. So that's an eight-point bump. That's a nice bump for us. We were pretty happy with that. 
Um, and then as we, as we drill down into a couple of the projects, Cinder, 37% use 100 terabytes of Cinder storage versus 28% last year. Similarly, Swift storage grew 400%, which is huge growth. And if you see here, this, uh, you know, you got 16% that are, um, that have uh, using one petabyte of data or more. And then number of objects stored, 33% um, store 100,000 Swift objects um, or more versus 33% last year, or 13%, I mean, so that's really nice growth. So let's talk about some of the deployment decisions and their choices. So Kubernetes, which you'll hear a lot about um, at our conferences, and you hear a lot about us at theirs, um, they're the most popular container tool for managing applications on OpenStack, followed, interestingly, by Build Your Own, um, and then OpenShift and Docker Swarm. So there's a, yeah, there's a percentage of people out there still building their own. And then Docker's the top format for those people who are running OpenStack services inside of a container. But actually, interesting, 20% of the respondents said they're using more, uh, more than one container format. So a lot of people might be using both or another. And then resources. Analyze the results yourself. This tool allows you to go and filter by geography and by year. So you can take multiple years. You can filter for a geography that's relevant to you and slice and dice the data um, if you want to use it to present to your management team or just to inform yourself. It's there. Um, you can download this report and previous year's reports at this site. User survey. And here comes a surprise. For those of you who want to take the user survey now, it's open and it's available in German thanks to Deutsche Telekom for translating it for us. So we made the user survey available in Chinese, not, you didn't help with this one, <laughs> Chinese, Korean, Japanese, and German. So you can take it in your own language. So we hope to see results from all of you users who didn't respond last year and those who did. And I would like to take credit for this survey, but no one person actually pulls it together. We've got um, a user committee that, that um, lends their um, assistance to it. We've got a user survey working group. We've got a whole bunch of people at the foundation, and then we hire a, a data scientist to kind of figure out what all of this means. So it's a real team effort, just like everything else at OpenStack. So I just want to make sure these people get some, some credit for the work that they do. Thank you. Fragen. <laughs> hey. Wow. So you can either ask questions, you can go perform some miracles, you can go home, <laughs> whatever, whatever it is. Yes. Uh, do you also have numbers uh, for, for example, German market or European market? We do. Um, the, the filter that I showed you, I don't know. If, I don't think it goes down to a country level, but it goes down to a. Um, I think it doesn't come down to. It, it might actually. Mm. It goes by geography. It might actually have to look at it because it's okay. new, um, and it might actually go, go down to a country level. And yeah, not just so Europe. maybe suggestion for the next talk like this, also two minutes talk about the uh, German I know, market. that would be great. That would have been really yeah. smart. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're open to feedback. There's a lot more that's included than I put in these slides because it would have been a really long and boring presentation. But um, you can see there's, you know, a lot of data here. Anyone else? Any other data people? No? Well, thank you very much for staying around. I really enjoyed meeting all of you over the last few days, so thank you.